In this video, we solve an integral differential equation with the Laplace transformation method. Here we have a, an equation. I guess I should put an I in front of that. It contains the derivative of an unknown function y. It also contains the integral of that unknown function. In order to find y, we can use the Laplace transformation method and what we know about the Laplace transform of a convolution. So it actually starts in a way that's very similar to the way that we typically um, solve a um, initial value problem with the Laplace transformation method. We let the Laplace transform of little y equal big Y because we want to introduce our notation and then we compute the Laplace transform of the integral differential equation. And the Laplace transform is still a linear operator, so we can take the Laplace transform, or the Laplace transformation as a linear operator. We take the Laplace transform term by term. Okay. Since this is an uh, First derivative, we start with um, s to the first and we multiply by the Laplace transform of little y and then we subtract little y at zero to get the Laplace transform of that first derivative. Since it's the, the, remember the nth derivative um, has a Laplace transform with n plus one terms, that's one way that you can check. And then we just take the Laplace transform of all these functions on this side. The Laplace transform of one is one over s Laplace transform of sine of kt with k equals 1. Well, in general, it's k over s squared plus k squared. k equals 1. It's going to be 1 over s squared plus 1 squared, which is just 1. And here, it looks like you just have a y of t, and there's no function g of t minus tau multiplying this. So in this case, um, the other function has to be a one. So this is the Laplace transform of the convolution of y with one. The Laplace transform of the convolution is the Laplace transform of the first function times the Laplace transform of the second function. The Laplace transform of one is y over s. Then we will use our initial condition, y of zero equals zero. We'll substitute that there. And now we just want to solve for y of s. and then we'll compute the inverse transform. So I will add this um, one over s times y of s to both sides. And then I would factor out that y of s And then I would highly recommend getting a common denominator. And that rather than dividing this by this and then having to deal with the complex fractions, I would get a common denominator here and then just multiply by the reciprocal. And since the common denominator is S, I would multiply this by S over S. And we'd end up with S squared plus one over S on, on the left-hand side, multiplying that Y of S. Actually, let's do that, keep that there. And that equals this. And I'm just leaving space because I want to multiply by the reciprocal of this to get y by itself. So I'm multiplying everything by s over s squared plus 1. And then we simplify where we can. These guys reduce and these guys reduce. The s's reduce here. And then I have y of s equals 1 over s squared plus 1. I know the inverse transform of that. And then I have minus s over s squared plus 1 quantity squared. Now, I don't know that transform off the top of my head, but I've seen 
expressions that look like that in my table of the class transform. So I will look that up in my table now. So I'm looking in my table for an S over S squared plus K squared or S plus S squared plus K squared quantity squared. And if there's any constant multiplying it, that's not a big deal. I can always adjust the constant, but I need a single S to the first over S squared plus K squared quantity squared. And I see it, I see it right here. That's a 2KS, that 2K is just a constant over S squared plus K squared quantity squared. That's number 22 in our table. So it looks like the inverse transform of that is T times sine of KT. So let me write that one down. So we are intending to compute uh, Y of T equals the inverse transform of uh, Y of S at this point. And then we say, what is the appropriate entry in our table? From the table, we see that the inverse uh, transform of 2ks over s squared plus k squared quantity squared is t times sine of kt. So that's what I'm going to use right here. But in order to use that, it looks like I need, well, I need a 2ks in the numerator. Since k squared is one, that means k is equal to one. So that means I just need a two in the numerator. So I will make that a 2s. I can do that as long as I also compensate. If I want to multiply by 2, I can do that by, as long as I also divide by 2. And then this matches this pattern where k is equal to 1. So now we're ready to compute the inverse transform. That means little y of t is the inverse transform of y of s, which is this. That's k over s squared plus k squared, which we know to be sine of kt with k equals 1. So that's going to be sine of t. Then we have minus 1 half of the inverse transform of this piece, which is this with k equals 1. So we have t times sine of t there. I guess if you wanted to, you could factor out that sine of t. And you'd have a 1 minus 1 half t times sine of t is our function y of t. And if you're asking yourself, what is it again that we're finding? Well, that's a function that you can take the derivative of that satisfies this equation. If you plug in y of t or y of tau here and you integrate from zero to t, and you subtract that from one minus sine of t, you're actually gonna get the derivative of y. Um, and this function also satisfies y of zero equals zero. And I think we can see that if we plug in zero here, we're gonna get zero. Um, so that, that second condition definitely checks out. So solving an integral equation or an integral differential equation really isn't that bad now that we know how to take the Laplace transform of a convolution. Um, it's almost identical. It, the method is almost identical to the method that we use when we're solving an initial value problem. The only difference is that we just have to apply that convolution theorem um, once at the very beginning. And then we just solve for y of s and compute the inverse transform to find y of t or f of t or whatever that function is that we're looking for.